All right, class, this is going to be a video on balancing equations, probably the first video in the series. And we're going to be working on questions from your balancing equations uh, part one homework assignment, which you will copy into your notebook. I have a worksheet here, but yours is going to be done in your notebook. I'm going to refer to the hints that we talked about in class. We talked about a few hints for balancing equations, starting with this one, one, and it goes all the way to six. So I'm not really going to go through those, but I will refer to them as they are helpful for some of these questions. So I'm going to do three from the first section of this assignment and then three from the second section of the assignment, starting with number one. So this one, in part one, we're just trying to balance the chemical equations by adding the coefficients in front of each of these substances to make sure that they're balanced. What you want is that all of the atoms on the left side, all of the reactants over here, all the atoms that make up the reactants have to equal the number of atoms that are on the product side. So you're just trying to balance these by adjusting the numbers of each substance. So a few of the hints that we want to consider with number one are, starting with the first one, um, well not the first hint, the second hint is that we want to balance elements or polyatomic ions one at a time by adding coefficients. So this is really important. You want to just work on one thing at a time because it can be overwhelming to look at the entire equation at once. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to also use this hint number four that says we want to start with the elements that are present in the least number of substances. So sometimes in reactions, like in this example, uh, oxygen is in three different compounds and hydrogen is in three different compounds, so it's not a good idea to start with those. We want to start with ones that are more simple and maybe only in one thing on the left and one thing on the right. So when I look at number one, oxygen is a bad place to start because it's in three different things. So a better choice would be either calcium or hydrogen. So I'm going to go ahead and start with calcium, and again the goal is to balance the things on the left with the things on the right. So if I look here, CaO, um, there's one calcium on the left side of this equation, the left, si left side of the arrow. On the right side, there's also one calcium. So calcium so far is already balanced, and we don't even need to add any coefficients. All right, so then I'm going to switch to hydrogen, because again, we don't want to do oxygen yet. So hydrogen, there's two in this, on this side of the reaction. On the other side of the reaction, because it's inside the parentheses, there are also two. So again, hydrogen is also already balanced, so we don't have to do anything there. Now it is time for us to look at oxygen. And on the left side, it's in two different things. So if you add those together, there's one here, one here. So there's two oxygens on the left side. And on this side, since the oxygen is inside of the parentheses, there are also two oxygens on the right-hand side of the reaction. So number one, as we go through one by one, we find out that this equation is already balanced. And so you don't have to add any coefficients to reaction number one. It is already balanced. Okay? So if you don't need to, if you're not adding a number, if it's one, if you need one of any of these things, we generally do not write the number one. We just leave it as it is, and the one is implied. Okay, so we'll move on to number two. So we're going to use our same hints, go one at a time, and this is going to be a lot of kind of back and forth you'll see in balancing. So you can just pick what to start with because everything is pretty simple in this one. I'm going to just go ahead and start with the Hg mercury here. So in on the left side of the reaction, again, we're looking at the left side of the arrow, there's one Hg. On the right side, also one Hg, so that looks good so far. If we switch our focus to oxygen, we have one oxygen on the left side. We have two oxygens on the right side. So now we're going to have to do some adjusting. So since there are two on this side, we need to make sure that it balances on this side by changing this to a two. We can't change the formula. Um, we have to just change the amount that we have of HgO. Okay, so we can't change the formula to HgO2. So by putting a two there now, what we've done is we've also changed the number of, of mercuries here. So but by putting the two in front, it's also going to have an effect on this Hg. Now we have two Hgs, so we need to balance that on this side by adding a 2 here. So now the Hgs are balanced, the Os are balanced, and now this 
reaction is also balanced. Okay, so you'll see it's a lot of this back and forth. Let's skip down to number seven, a little bit bigger reaction here, and we're going to use another one of our hints here. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this reaction, but what I want you to realize is that there are lots of polyatomic ions. Hopefully you recognize things like phosphate and hydroxide. And those polyatomic ions, if you notice, are staying together. PO4 on this side, PO4 on this side, OH on this side, OH on this side. So what we can do is when we're balancing equations like this that have polyatomic ions, we can treat them as chunks. Right? We can't change the formula of any of these compounds or any of the polyatomic ions, but we can count them as chunks of one thing. So for example, on this side of the reaction, we have two phosphates. And on this side, we have one phosphate. So it'll be easier to keep them together rather than saying uh, we have one phosphorus and four oxygens and then multiply those by two. Don't even worry about that. Think of it as a chunk. So if you do that, you can go about this the same way we did the previous two. Just go one at a time, and it's going to be a back and forth game. Okay, so why don't we start with, I usually just start with the first thing, as long as it's only in one thing on the left, one thing on the right. So magnesium here, I'll start with that. Um, and we have three on this side, three magnesiums. So then if I look on the other side of the reaction to magnesiums, there's only one magnesium on this side. Remember that two is only affecting the things in the parentheses. So I need to balance the magnesiums here by putting a three. And that three in front is now going to affect the hydroxides, right? Because that's part of this formula. So by putting the three there, I'm now going to have to multiply this hydroxide by three. There were two of them. Now it's times three. So now there are six hydroxides on this side. So then I have to switch to consider this hydroxide where there's only one of them. So on this side I have six, on this side I have one. So to keep that balanced, we need to put a six there to now give six hydroxides on this side of the reaction. And again, now that I've put that six there, I'm now changing the sodiums. So see how this can just keep going and going. So now that I have six sodiums here, I need to make sure that's balanced on this side. There are only three sodiums. So in order to make the, the sodiums to six here, I need to put a two. Because now if you do two times three, that gives you six sodiums. That balances with these six sodiums. And now since I've added that two, again, I'm changing the phosphates. So by putting the two in front, now I have two phosphates on this side. So we need to check on the other side. We're in luck because there are already two phosphates here. So those are balanced. And once you've added your coefficients, it's always good to go back and double check that everything does balance out quickly. So three magnesiums, three magnesiums, two phosphates, two phosphates, six sodiums, six sodiums, six hydroxides, and six hydroxides. So it's a little bit bigger one, but again, take it one at a time, and it's a big back and forth game. Uh, I think I'll switch to another video for part two of this assignment.